Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of thecreditpressshop.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about some ways that we can uh, fight back against debt collectors. Um, doing some research. I was uh, away for the week uh, for a few days last week and I was just, um, you know, when I had some free time checking out some things about uh, debt collection, the, the, you know, studying the laws, studying uh, different lawsuits, studying what the CFPB has done, what the uh, Federal Trade Commission has done. And I had came across some information on Encore and Portfolio Recovery Associates. And, um, you know, some of, the, some of the information that I saw is is something that we are using when we're fighting back against debt collectors, which is one of the number one things is that they are not guaranteed that the portfolios are 100% accurate. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the cases uh, that I was able to review, it had stated that they estimate that the portfolios are uh, accurate and you can't estimate that something is accurate, you have to know that it's accurate. Uh, but uh, another thing that um, <laughs> that caught me off guard was that, may, but potentially, my state of Wisconsin is responsible for making debt collections all across the United States easier. Uh, I was looking and there was a law that was passed here in 2006 where they allowed debt collectors to only show one statement. All they had to do was just show one statement. And that's why uh, when you have a debt collector contact you and they you do a debt validation, they'll you know send that one uh, billing statement from the original creditor. And when I saw that, I was like, well, what? You know, the, the, in the, the uh, legislator who wrote it, obviously he was lobbied by the debt collection companies because there would be no other reason to come up with this, uh, you know, to put this legislation out. What are you going to try to do? Help debt collectors? And, and you have uh, thousands, millions of uh, uh, voters that um, you would be potentially hurting with this uh, by not trying to allow them to run from a debt. We're not talking about that. They just made it easier for a debt collector to be able to come after people for a debt. So they're, you know, why not uh, leave it the same and have them go through the same process that they had to always go through. And when they, when, when that law was passed, you could see that it was a domino effect all across the United States and where you'll get a debt uh, you know, uh, first you got the letter from the debt collector and then you, you submit it to get a, a verification or validation of the debt. And then they would send a statement, one statement back. And that was good enough. And they could take you to court over having that, just that one statement. So uh, doing my research and this is, I'm going to tell you what you got to dig into when you're dealing with debt collectors. Like this will get debt collectors' attention and will make most debt collectors stop because they can't go, they can't move over this hurdle. Now, not to say that they won't try. They'll, you know, run people to court, hoping that people won't come to court and um, hoping people won't respond to the court summons and they'll just push it because they're in the business of making money. And they know that if you put uh, take 10 people to court, and you have 10 portfolio, 10 uh, uh, accounts that cannot be proven, and you take 10 people to court, according to the stats, according to what's out there with all of the different uh, 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 websites and consumer groups and all of those organizations, nine times out of 10, uh, people will not go to court. And the one of the 1% who do go to court seven tenths of that one percent will just go to court and say they don't know what they're going to do about the debt they won't even challenge the debt they won't even make them do a validation or a full validation they just accept what's uh, given to them so when uh when i was doing my research cfpb stated that uh 
that almost like a large amount of the debt that these debt collection companies, these two, and I'm pretty sure it carries over to the other ones, that they were tempted to collect on unsubstantiated or inaccurate debt. So now what do they mean by unsubstantiated or inaccurate debt? They bought it from a portfolio. They bought it from the original creditor. You knew you had the debt with the original creditor. They approached you about paying that debt with the original creditor and, you know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to answer them. You don't know how to challenge it. You don't know how to do anything. The one part of the law that was not changed, and uh, I'm pretty sure if you work with any uh, consumer debt lawyer that that understands consumer debt, is that when you challenge um, a debt collector, you should challenge the entire portfolio. I know people think that it's all about what they're doing with them, you know, th with them specifically, and they want you to actually focus on what they're, what you're doing, what they're doing to you specifically, even though to them, you're just a number. If you were to call back, you probably wouldn't even be able to talk to the same person. You would be moved on to someone else. And that proves that you're just a number to them. They're just trying to, uh, you know, run through these accounts and get as many paid as possible. The problem, and this is a legal problem. It has been uh, lit, uh, has been uh, litigated, and they state that if there's a problem, a potential problem with any of the portfolio, it could potentially make the entire portfolio inaccurate. And the reasons why is because it's stemming from if the company, the original creditor, is giving you a portfolio, and you're taking responsibility. When they sell those portfolios to debt collectors, the debt collector states, I mean, in the contract it states, and you can look at this on the affidavits, that they assume 100% of the, of the portfolio, and they say, from what we saw with the portfolio, we, as, we are assuming that it's 100% accurate. That's not good enough. You, you, if you just simply challenge that affidavit and said, what part of the portfolio are you assuming is accurate? Why won't you give us a statement saying that the entire portfolio is 100% accurate? If you read the affidavits, it will state in there that they review, you know, they know how they do the business records. It was kept a certain way. Uh, I'm of 18 years old and I understand that these business records are done this certain way. And from my knowledge, it should be accurate. That's not good enough. If you challenge that, you can win. Like those, they're giving you, they're opening the door. They're not just making that affidavit and saying that for nothing. They're making that affidavit to kind of get into the judge's mind that, okay, everything is okay. There's no problem with it. Just trust us. We made this affidavit. Even though that affidavit is from the company that bought the portfolio. Like when I was reviewing some of, some of the uh, files from from uh, individuals who sent it to us to review, I was like, these affidavits are not even put together by the original creditor. They're put together by the portfolio company themselves. They have their own person saying that they reviewed the files. And there's, I, even though I work for the debt collection company, I'm saying that the files are correct. But that's not good enough. It has to be correct from the original creditor. And they do not work for the original creditor. They do not do any accounting for the original creditor. All they do is buy a file number and that file, I mean, a, a port debt portfolio, which is a file number, has all of the accounts, has some information. A lot of it is redacted. And they give it to them. And the original creditor says, don't come back to us for nothing. You got what you're going to get. And it's usually going to be a couple of statements. You're going to have some of the information. You're not even going to have full account numbers. So now why wouldn't you, as your right to just say, hey, I want to challenge everything about this. And they may come back and say, well, what are you challenging about it? Well, I'm challenging uh, because my recollection, number one, does I don't recollect this amount. And you will you will be telling the truth. Let me tell you why. 
because something that I've seen credit card companies do, and even if it was a repossessed vehicle, is that they will add up fees and they didn't notify you after the charge off date. They were rolling up uh, interest rate fees and you were never notified. You thought that it was this amount that was shown on your credit reports. And it's, when you get it, it's a whole different amount. So that opens the door up for you to be able to say, okay, this is what this, let, let me just lay this out on how I want to challenge this debt collector. Because if this debt collector is saying that this was right, I have documentation from my credit report showing that that amount is not right. Uh, how did you come up with that amount? And I want all of the records. I want every record. Since you're saying that you have an affidavit saying that this portfolio that you purchased is 100% accurate well, or assumed to be accurate, that I want everything pertaining to my account. I want all of the charges. I want all of the interest that was charged. I want everything. I want to see all of it. Give it all to me, including the account number, my original contract, everything. Get it over to me for me to review to make sure that everything that you have is 100% accurate. They won't be able to provide you that information. And that's how you fight them. Now, when you know they may try to come back and say well we need more time we need to do this and we need to do that the judge might give them you know uh, uh extension when you go back to court you tell them hey that's not good enough if you're fighting against them before it even goes to court and they're sending you that documentation you send them back saying that's not good enough i want this 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 and this so you so that means that if they do decide to take you to court with your response, you already have everything all prepared. You just got to put it on, the, you know, set it up appropriately for the court. And you'll say, I gave them the opportunity. They never responded with all of the information that I wanted. I want to have this case dismissed. Now, some other things that uh, CFP had, CFPV had talked about uh, is that they had a huge amount, especially with report, portfolio recovery, since they were the one that was sued here and Encore, is that they had misrepresented their intention to prove debts they sued, they sued consumers over. So what they were saying again is that they had all, they would tell the consumer, we have all of this information and we're going to sue you. And they misrepresented that, that. But how can they be caught misrepresenting it? Only way they can be caught misrepresenting it Re misrepresenting that is by you or companies like mine putting a lot of pressure on them to get all of the documentation to prove that the individual it, and i don't like to have this word to prove that you owe the debt all the documentation to prove their claim their claim is the amount that they're claiming that you owe them prove the amount of your claim with documentation that I'm asking you for that you should have that was passed down in the portfolio, which is not passed down in the portfolio. It's a trap. But they misrepresented uh, that they had the all of the information. Also, portfolio and uh, Encore also relied on misleading, misleading and robo-sign court filings to churn out lawsuits what this was so what that means is that they just said put the documents together and it didn't even they would just all really be the same information they would just change the amount on there and they made this really easy when COVID uh blew up is that all they had to do was change the amounts and change the names change the court uh, the uh court uh uh, case number and robo sign it, submit it, pay the fee, and often and they were often going it without even really if if a person was to look at it, a lot of those was like, what are they even saying? This doesn't even pertain to me. Like when we would get documents, I was like, this information on here doesn't even really pertain to you. It just looks like they just threw it together and and uh, submitted it. Uh, something else that they had trouble with is that uh, 
they were threatening to sue people for debt that was past the legal statute of limitations. Uh, some people think that this just does not happen, and it does happen. They will threat. They will threaten to sue people over debt that is past the legal statute of limitations. And the reason why they do it is because people don't know about the statute of limitations on the debt. Like a lot of people, when they think about the statute of limitations, they think mainly about the seven-year statute of limitations to put stuff on their credit report. And then they think that because it can't be on their credit report, they cannot be sued. Uh, for that debt. Like if it comes back around, uh, the, you know, it's past the statute of limitations, it was taken off my credit report. That is not the case for all states. There are, there are a few states that one state has a 15 year and one state has two states have a 10 year statute of limitations. So that means it can be off of your credit report. A debt collector can buy that debt and come after you and sue you for that debt. And if you don't uh, respond to it appropriately, they can get a a judgment against you, default judgment or a judgment where you show up over that debt because you didn't challenge them appropriately on that debt. So don't just lean on thinking that the, because it came off your credit reports uh, that the debt just disappears after the seven years. It doesn't. Now, you need to know your state's specific statute of limitations for collecting debt because it is different for all 50 states. You can go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com, go to my blog at the bottom, and then type in statute. You will see the statute of limitations for collecting debt in all 50 states. And now, if the debt is past the legal statute of limitations, all you have to do is send them a letter notifying them that the debt is past the legal statute of limitations for them to be able to collect. That's all you got to do. Don't do a debt validation. Don't do a verification. Don't get into all of that. All you have to do is notify them of that, and they have to stop coming after you for that debt. And if they sell it to someone, you keep that letter that you sent to them notifying them because then you'll be able to sue them and that other debt collector that comes after you. The other debt collector might say that they didn't know, but you still can put it on record to uh, try to sue them. Uh they also got in trouble for pressuring uh, uh, pressure consumers to make payments using misrepresentation. I'm going to talk about this one here. Uh, Encore and Portfolio Recovery made inaccurate statements to consumers to press them on making payments. And they knew that the statements and information that they had received was either not accurate or not complete. This is why you have to challenge everything. You could say, well, I've made payments and I know that this account balance was not true. And you have your own, uh, your, your own memory and other information that you may have at home or on your credit reports that show a different balance. So you want them to prove everything on that. What they would do is they would just make misrepresentations saying that we have all of the information, we have all of your payments, and we know that you owe that amount. It, it's 100%, and, we, and if you want us to prove it to you, we'll just send you the information, and they would just send that one statement all over again, or they would send you that statement. They can't do that, but they get away with doing it because people don't challenge them on that. Uh also something that they were doing, and, and this catches people uh, by surprise. Let me take a quick drink here. This uh, uh, takes people by surprise is that you get a call from a, a debt collector and uh, they say that an attorney reviewed the file that uh, uh, a lawsuit is imminent. They Number one, they can't threaten to do that and not take you to court but one of the things that uh is not uh known by a lot of people is that lawyers will not actually review review the file because if they review the file it takes it into a different category and they have to actually hold and do they it's like it becomes their file they have to do everything from start to finish they can pass it off to another attorney but it gets out of the hands of being able to be handled by the uh, representatives that are calling you, the regular uh, associates or, or, or uh, workers for that uh, debt collection firm. 
A lawyer will not, won't look at it until it is filed with the court because then they have to look at it and they have to sign on it. And they're going to look at every way to not get themselves into trouble by uh, saying that the accounts were appropriate. They're going to have every uh, loophole uh, put in place so they don't get in trouble. Not to say that you won't win. They'll just say, hey, uh, we choose to dismiss this case because we did not have uh, certain documents or we, we were not able to prove uh, this amount 100%. And they know that they're not allowed, that they can't prove it 100% because they bought a portfolio from someone that they don't, that they're only connected to by the transaction. Nothing else is really connecting them to it. So I wanted to, uh, you know, let you know about that because, the, you know, the way to fight back against debt collectors is not to run from a debt collector. It's to actually challenge the documentation that they're presenting to you. Look at it. Look at what they're sending to you and then just, you know, break it down and say, okay, I'm going to challenge these things, which is number one, is it accurate? Is, is the portfolio 100% accurate? Give me a documentation. They're going to give you an affidavit. You're going to challenge the affidavit saying, that affidavit is produced by you. Give me an affidavit produced by the original creditor. They'll usually have a, a letter signed by the, uh, uh, you know, vice president or someone with the company that, that handles the sales of the portfolios. And if you read that letter carefully, there's going to be an opening because they're not going to still, they're not going to say, because they don't want to get in any trouble. They're not going to say that a hundred percent of that portfolio is accurate because they could have people who filed bankruptcy after that. Anything could have happened. So that's why you challenge the entire portfolio. A lot of people, they be thinking only individual, you know how we are. We only think about ourselves. But if you think about everybody, when you, when you want everybody to win, you can also end up winning also. All right. So if you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three pack of letters. The letters are below uh, this. The link is below this video. Statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, cease and desist collection activities letter. Please make a donation. I get a lot of people who get that letter and it literally can save you thousands of dollars, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And the heartache, like the, uh, for some pe reason, people discount stress, which uh, stress is right up there with money. Like they're right here. And then sometimes stress could be even higher because stress leaks into problems with your family, friends, you know, work, sleep, all of that stuff. So, uh, it can really save you by getting those letters and at least initiating, uh, you know, uh, uh, your uh, rights to fight back against a debt collector. So you're going to get the statute of limitations letter, cease and desist collection activities letter, and the debt validation letter. I give you the instructions on there. I also have an updated pack. Uh, you can also grab those. Soon as you, uh, you know, get the on a link it's going to get sent right to you so don't don't worry about that um if you need help with your credit please visit us at the .com. watch the video what makes a difference so you can see my eight point validation process and my two-phase settlement process helped a lot of people with settlements um man when a person is able to move forward where they're just like okay you know work this deal out for me so i can move forward uh, like the frustration and the anxiety, all of that stuff just, just wipes off of a person. So it's, uh, uh, I love, uh, when, when, when we're able to help people get through uh settlements, so they're able to move forward. Uh, and you can make settlements could be at a discount settlements, you know, it, it just depends on the creditor, but, uh, sometimes it can be 25%, 50%, even 75%, uh, you know, it's, it's a great time for people when, when we're able to help them with that. So if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Links are below this video. If you need your credit reports and scores, because everything starts there, that could actually be the door that opens on you being able to challenge the balances on these accounts uh, if you have a debt collector coming after you. Uh, the link is below this video. You can get your TransUnion Equifax Experian reports and all three scores. And we also have a special link if you want to get your uh, FICO scores. You know, you can grab those FICO scores. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel.
Please ask your questions and post your comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.